Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution and Textiles, Sri Piyush Goelji, to please light the lamp and commence the Republic Summit 2024. If I could request Arnab Goswami, Abhishek Kapoor, to please join us on, on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, as the Honorable Minister Arnab and Abhishek actually set fire to India's journey. Thank you very much, Minister Sir. I now request Mr. Arnab Goswami, Chairman and Editor-in-Chief of the Republic Media Network, to please take the stage and set the ball rolling. Good morning and thank you everyone for a full house attendance this morning. So thank you very much at the start. And thank you Piyushji for coming this morning and thank you for so many of, so many of my friends, so many, so many colleagues, so many familiar faces, so many uh, people who have, uh, who have invested their faith in us uh, and so many people who have supported us and stood by us and uh, so many colleagues of mine, so many people who come on television and uh, it's just remarkable, remarkable that we start on a weekday with a packed house. So once again to all of you for believing in Republic. And I don't say, Piyushi, I don't say viewers of Republic. I always say believers in Republic. But belief is more than anything else. It's belief which has really driven us. So I want to start with a little update. We're not a listed company, so there are no AGMs here. But I want to give a few updates about what Republic is doing. With your support and your unwavering belief in us, Republic is growing. And in the last one year, I have been informed that today on Television Plus Digital, I'm happy to share with you that we have a combined reach, a network reach of 450 million plus today in aggregated objective terms, which means, which means that one in every three Indians is consuming Republic which also says that two in every three Indians is yet to consume Republic. So we are still a green field. So that's the first thing. Our aspiration in the future is to grow as quickly as possible. And we, we hope to set a pace of 1.5 languages per year. The year we have a little bit of money, we start one channel. The year we have a little more, we'll start two. But we want to, in the next half decade, because the theme of this event is Bharat the next decade, in the next half decade, our aspirations are to operate in every broadcast and publish in every major Indian language within the next three to four years, be the largest integrated media house in the country on television and digital, and to launch global operations, and to launch global operations and reach global audiences and I believe that with the vision of the Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, and the aspirational country that we have, an entrepreneur-driven organization, a journalist-driven organization like Republic is fully within reach to achieve that. Ladies and gentlemen, I am also happy to announce, and we'll talk about it later, the imminent launch of the largest news studio and newsroom headquarters in Asia. Asia's largest newsroom, Asia's largest studio complex designed by the best global minds and brands which is to be launched next month. We, we are people of action. We are people of execution. It is a lot of hard work. It is our life's effort. It is our entire life's effort. We have dreamed beyond dreams and I hope to take you all there. I hope to take the Honorable Minister there also soon. So we are in execution mode right now. And lastly, Republic is a good company. 
It's a growing company. It's a thriving company. As I wish to tell the Prime Minister later this evening when he comes, companies like Republic are growing because of their atmosphere and the surround sound that has been created in this country and the positive energy where everything is possible in the last 10 years. We are basically a bunch of professionals who go out there and get it done. And that is what we, we have as a motto in our newsrooms, get the job done. So Minister, welcome, warm welcome to all of you. We are going to have a great session on Bharat the next decade. And um, briefly, I'll tell you why I believe we are there. Mohandas Pai is in the audience. He's the man of statistics. But I always say, people say, five trillion economy. But Mr. Pai, you'll agree with me in purchasing power terms. If I'm not mistaken, the chartered accountants can tell me right. I think we're already in PPP terms over a $10 trillion economy. So I think, I think we, and that tells you the scale of the economy that we have. And that is where is the starting point of today's deliberations. So welcome everyone. Let's have a great session on Bharat the next ticket. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Arnab, for laying out your vision on what you envision this summit to bring. Bharat's momentum is at a clip consistently, and that is the world's envy. Bharat's clarity in purpose is setting the global agenda, and our pursuit through every moment of strife is ensuring that we've made the triumph our baseline. And leading that energetic pursuit through every adversity we are privileged to have with us, Bharat's Minister of Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution and Textiles, and Master Negotiator, Sri Piyush Goyal. Today, Mr. Goyal will be presenting his vision statement on maximizing the momentum in the next decade. Mr. Goyal has steered the nation through the most trying happenings. He does not budge not when it comes to ensuring Bharat's interests are delivered. From the boldness of putting diplomatic talks in abeyance, to plain speak on the WTO, to ensuring the FTA is on Bharat's terms, Mr. Goyal has been steadfast in winning the terms of India. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Piyush Goyal, Bharat's master negotiator. It's not going to be India's decade, it's going to be India's century. Exit Bharat and to make India a superpower. It's not going to be India's decade, it's going to be India's century. Tesla already last year bought $1 billion of components from I think all of you sitting here, I have the list of companies who supplied to Tesla. This year their target is nearly 1.7 or 1.9 billion dollars, what they mentioned. Just Makar se Bharat tej gati se aage bad raha hai, Bharat mein infrastructure bane, ati adhone ki infrastructure ho, jo aage aane wale kal ke liye, भारत की जरूरतों को पूरा कर सके अमृत पीढ़ी के भरोसे विकसित भारत एक समृद्ध भारत बनेगा थैंक यू वेरी मच अर्नब एंड द रिपब्लिक फैमिली वी आर ऑल प्राउड टू बी मेंबर्स ऑफ योर फैमिली एंड देफो द बिलीफ हैज टू कम वेरी नेचुरली आर नाम रियली डिलाइटेड टू बी अमंगस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू दिस मॉर्निंग इट्स अ मोमेंटस डे इट्स अ डे ऑन विच द ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज विजिटिंग द कश्मीर वैली इट्स अ डे विच इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू सेलिब्रेट the removal of article 370 and 35a from the constitution something which i think every indian and 
all of us for generations have wished for, have worked for, have struggled for. And I still remember the Honorable Prime Minister literally having to force his way to go to Lal Chowk to unfurl the tricolor many years ago when the then central government and the state government did not permit him to do go along with uh, all the workers of the Bharatiya Janata Party. And it was a very telling commentary of where the state of the nation was that a territory which belongs to India was often referred to as Aap Indians or Hum Kashmiri. And it was an, an, an absolutely unfortunate past that we inherited. But I'm truly delighted that the Honorable Prime Minister and Honorable Home Minister, the two architects of this journey to fulfill the dreams of more than a billion Indians to get Kashmir fully integrated into India happened on the 5th and 6th of August 2019. Many of us were privileged to be a part of that history in the making. And what one sees today in Kashmir over the last five years is truly a phenomenal turnaround where every Kashmiri today feels blessed that as a part of India, as an integral part of India, Kashmir is growing, Kashmir is developing. Every Kashmiri has a bright future ahead of him, just as every Maharashtrian or Gujarati or Telugu. And that's the beauty of India. That's the beauty of the Republic of India. And I'm just a small housekeeping issue. I think you could possibly add high ethics also when you describe the Republic in the evening to the Prime Minister. We always believed that you were right and now the courts have also ruled that Republic was right and not responsible for all the false allegations that were made on the Republic channel and particularly the harassment that Arnab had to go through personally. I think let's all stand up and give him a round of applause for standing up for what has always been right. <laughs> Friends, the Honorable Prime Minister is not only a man of vision, but a person on a mission to transform the future of India, to make India once again reclaim the lost glory. And truly, when on the 22nd of January, we saw him at the Pran Pratishtha of the Ram Temple, immersed in devotion, after an 11-day Anushtan, an 11-day period during which he followed all the vows that are recommended actually only for three days, but he followed it for 11 days, very strict disciplines to truly fulfill the dreams of 1.4 billion Indians. I think in a sense, the Prime Minister showed to the world that as a nation, India stands united, united in the pursuit of protecting our rich legacy, our rich history, our rich culture, ensuring we don't make the mistakes and learn from historical wrongs that have happened in this country. ambition to make sure that no Indian is left behind in the journey of progress, 
a mission to once again make India, as the old Onida ad used to say, owner's pride and neighbor's envy. As he often told us, we have no time to lose, we have no time to wait. Last Sunday, he spent almost eight hours with the entire Council of Ministers and the top leadership of the Government of India, preparing a roadmap for this great country for the next 25 years in the Amrit Kal, where each one of us has committed ourselves to work with a sense of purpose, a sense of duty, a commitment to make India a developed nation by 2047. And I tell you, the plans that were prepared and in consultation with over 1.5 million people, with the inputs sourced and crowdsourced from across the country, looking at inclusivity and sustainability at the core of India's growth, ensuring that we find our rightful place in the Committee of Nations, working towards a $30 trillion economy, $30 trillion plus economy by 2047, but with well laid out path on how, what and who will do our contribution, will make our contributions towards the goal that we are all committed to. And friends, that is why the Prime Minister says, and I quote, today, Bharat is tirelessly working day and night towards a promising future. Sentiment echoing everywhere is India is the future. If today the world thinks India is ready to take a big leap, it has a powerful launch pad of 10 years behind it. And that is the 10-year story that during the course of the day, I'm sure different colleagues will also be sharing with you. Many of us are young. We, we have not experienced what we went through before 2014. But I can tell you I've, I, I learned my early lessons in television debates and television discussions with Arnab in the 2010 to 14 period. In many of his debates uh, on television, when the nation wanted to know how we are going to come out of the distressful situation full of scandals, a weak economy, very low self-esteem of the nation and our people, very poor image of the country across the world, very little respect for an Indian passport. And to sum it up, a very low confidence about the future. And I remember at that time talking to Arnab, talking about how we would take the country in the post-2014 period under Prime Minister Modi's leadership to greater heights of development, how we would find the right pathway to make sure that the country progresses fast to meet the aspirations of a billion plus people. And I think the Prime Minister's focus on the three tracks, one, developing the strong macroeconomic fundamentals, two, ensuring social welfare reaches the last man at the bottom of the pyramid, and three, ensuring that we have the enabling infrastructure. And infrastructure is not just about roads and railways, or even ports and airports, on each of which tremendous work has happened in the last 10 years. But infrastructure to engage with the world in terms of digital connectivity, infrastructure to ensure that our 
women, our sisters, daughters, get equal opportunity so that they can get out of the rigmarole of day-to-day -day living a very, very strenuous and difficult life to become part of the formal economy and contribute to the economy. Infrastructure to make sure that people are not looking to leave city, uh, their homes only to go into the cities for a living. Infrastructure that provides opportunity to every Indian to enjoy the good things of life that deservedly belong to 1.4 billion people. And this decade of transformation, this decade where merit has prevailed over psychophancy, has prevailed over family-run political establishments, this decade where we can truly see young India engaging with the whole world from a position of self-confidence with a spirit of can-do, I think is prepared India, has prepared the strong foundation, has prepared the base on which India will be progressing, India will be building towards a 30 plus trillion dollar economy. And a young India with the demographic dividend of an average age which is less than 30 years, expected to be less than 30 years for the next 30 years, adding $30 trillion to the economy in less than 30 years. We have an absolutely perfect storyline waiting for each one of us. A perfect situation where the stars are aligned. And as they say, when you want something with a great deal of commitment, when you are very, very sure you, about something that you desire, and you desire something from your heart, even the universe conspires to help you achieve that. And I think that's the time that we have before us in the country today. Very often we are asked how India will achieve such transformational targets, such big aims in 25 years. I think the simple story to be told is the power of compounding. Very often that is missed out, that there is a huge power in compounding and that's the power that India is benefiting from as the Prime Minister takes one step after another as the country moves forward with significant new ideas, as the country engages on a plethora of subjects with the rest of the world, and as the world also starts recognizing India's growth story, India's emerging strengths, as they see a country which was slated to grow at 6%, move up to 7%, and then last quarter show us an 8%, 8.4% growth. In a situation where we are living in turbulent times, a conflict in Ukraine, a conflict in Palestine, the Red Sea crisis, amongst all these difficulties, when the world sees India emerging as an oasis, as the bright spot on the globe, as they see India's U.S. dollar-driven nominal GDP catching up with our PPP, which is over $10 trillion, as you rightly pointed out already. As we grow from $3.7 trillion or thereabouts today, compounding on a nominal U.S. dollar GDP basis at about 9, 9.5%, 10%, the country and every countryman will enjoy the power of compounding. I can give you some data points about how the economy is growing rapidly, how the economy will become the third largest economy in the next three years, how we will probably cross uh, a 15 to 10 trillion dollar economy by 2030, and 
a 15 trillion dollar economy by 2034, 10 years from now. All of these are going to clearly lay out the pathway towards our journey to make sure that every Indian gets a good opportunity, an equal opportunity to contribute to the nation and for a better quality of life. With all the basic needs taken care of, we are out of that old thinking where roti, kapda, makan, bijli, sadak, pani, shiksha, swas, those typical old age concerns are being taken care of, are largely being ensured for every Indian. And that is what encourages a young man or woman in the remotest part of India, connected through the net to whatever is happening in the rest of the world. The encouragement to think big, the encouragement to aspire for all the good things of life. The big aspirations, the big goals that every Indian is setting for himself are today the drivers of India's future. Aaj desh mein disha bhi sahi hai, desh ki dasha bhi sahi ho rahi hai, desh ki niyat saaf hai, desh ki nitiya spasht hai, aur desh sahi nirnay le rahe hai. Aur aisi paristhiti mein दुनिया की कोई ताकत अब भारत को आगे बढ़ने से रोक नहीं सकती अब भारत चल पड़ा है अब भारत रुकने वाला नहीं है भारत के लोग बड़े बड़े लक्ष्य पाने के लिए तैयार हो गए अब भारत का जो ये परिवार है और कई लोग तो कहते हैं कि मोदी जी का कोई परिवार नहीं है मैं समझता हूं हम सब 140 करोड़ भारतवासी मोदी जी के परिवार और हम सब मिलके एक परिवार के नाते मित्र के नाते एक दूसरे के साथ चलकर जब 140 करोड़ भारतवासी एक एक कदम आगे बढ़ेंगे तब आप कल्पना करिए दुनिया देखेगी 140 करोड़ भारतवासियों की ताकत आपका एक कदम देश का 140 करोड़ कदम की तरह आगे बढ़ाएगा और आगे चलके मैं आपको विश्वास दिलाता हूं कि इसी तरीके से इसी तेज गति से भारत आगे बढ़ेगा भारत का एक एक नौ जवान नई उम्मीद नई उमंग नई आशाओं के साथ हमारी बहनें हमारे बच्चे इस देश को एक नया भविष्य बनाने में नया भविष्य सवारने में आज जुटे हुए हैं देश के कोने कोने में उत्साह की लहर है और मेरा पूरा विश्वास है और अगर मैं कहूं तो मेरा विश्वास अटल है कि देश बहुत ऊंची छलांग लगाने के लिए तैयार है नई ऊंचाइयों पे पहुंचने के लिए तैयार है हम सब ने तय करना है कि हम उसके भागीदार बनेंगे या हम पीछे रह जाएंगे और मैं समझता हूं देश का कोई नागरिक ऐसा नहीं है कोई व्यक्ति नहीं है जो पीछे रहेगा हम सब मिलके आगे बढ़ेंगे हम सब मिलके अपने परिवार का अपने देश का भविष्य उज्जवल बनाएंगे आप सबको बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर मिनिस्टर सर फॉर दैट इंसाइटफुल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन द डेकेड अहेड वी नाउ गॉट द रिपब्लिक मीडिया नेटवर्क्स चेयरमैन एंड एडिटर इन चीफ अर्नब गोस्वामी टू बी इन कॉन्वर्जेशन विद मिस्टर पीयूष गोयल ऑन द टेक अवेज गो है थैंक यू रिनी थैंक यू रिनी Mr. Goel, that was a very fine presentation. I really appreciate your joining us today at the Republic Summit and for lighting the lamp. But the nation wants to know. Uh, the nation wants to know whether it's true that you are fighting the next Lok Sabha elections from Mumbai. 
So let's start with the political question. In fact, at the WTO, the WTO Director General gave it away. When he said, why is Piyush Kiyol not come for WTO yet? So he says, you see, he's very busy. He is fighting an election. So they've announced it even before the BJP at the WTO. So maybe you, you want to We've been fighting elections ever since the day I was uh, born, probably. The Lok Sabha election. But uh, I think these are decisions the party takes. We have a party parliamentary board which uh, makes all these decisions. Uh, I can only tell you I would love to fight the election. Oh, great. If the party gives me an opportunity. Great, great. That's a good headline to start with. Piyush Goel says he's, he, he's going to be excited to fight the election if the party gives him an opportunity. Fantastic. I, I actually like this that, you know, in the Congress time, every, everybody was only from the Rajya Sabha. I think, I think the next time, almost most of the cabinet will be from the Lok Sabha. So that's going to be very, very exciting. Congratulations in advance. Mr. Goel, your party has set a target which seems to be going up. You know, <laughs> you used to predict 335 to 340 till six months back. And now your party has estimated a number of 370. Is this 370 number a psychological tactic or more than that? Is it a psychological tactic vis-a-vis -vis the other? I think it's a other. courage of conviction that what we have delivered in the last 10 years is being appreciated by the people of India and it is uh, our confidence, not arrogance, it is our confidence that ye janta sab samajhti hai. Bharat ki janta janti hai unke liye achha kya hai aur Bharat ke log sahi aur galat ke faasle mein is desh ko bohut achhi tarikhe se You think it's achievable? You think it's achievable? Haan, 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 so far as NDA or 370 as BJP, it's achievable in the same way. And I think that the mood of the nation, the mood of the nation, is 100% achievable. Absolutely. Well, we'll uh, it's, we're all uh, waiting to hear the Honorable Home Minister who's going to be coming in next. We'll talk more politics with him there. Mr. Goel, under your government, the economy is on track to reach a goal of 5 trillion by 2027. And uh, we've got a great growth rate of 8.2% in the last quarter. So congratulations for that. But your government is still, our government is still in a way unable to convince your biggest critics. So I, my question is about the narrative. The narrative from the naysayers is that the growth is not for all. The growth is for few. Uh, that it's the macro, uh, you know, it's the macro taking a dim view, but individual level change for the people of the country is not happening. Uh, we are not, we are still not doing well on the global hunger index. Uh, you know, things like that, that our per capita income is still around $2,000. So there's nothing to celebrate yet. So, uh, you know, do you believe somewhere that you need to more strongly counter this narrative? Do you have plans for it? Do you intend to do it? Well, I think uh, this question can best be answered by the four crore families, which is almost 20 crore people, who are today living in a pakka house that the central government has provided for. I think this narrative can best be countered by the 80 crore brothers and sisters, some from poor, some from the new middle class, whose food security is assured because they get free food grains month in and month out through years, particularly during the COVID period when we had doubled the food grain that was distributed. This narrative can best be answered by the 55 crore plus beneficiaries of free health care under the Ayushman Bharat scheme. Or the 11 crore plus sisters and mothers who today don't have to use a wood or coal-based chula, but have a cooking gas connection. It can best be explained, I think, to the naysayers by the 11 crore, 20 lakh families who didn't have a toilet at home. And personally, that's the one subject that has touched me the most, that Honorable Prime Minister, as soon as he came into office, his focus was on Swachh Bharat, his focus was on open defecation free India and his focus was that every woman or for that matter every person 
has a right to dignity and he spent large amounts of money to make sure that everybody gets a toilet at home. I think the naysayers have no choice but to take sense what's happening on the ground where people have benefited from the three tracks that I just mentioned. Yes. After all, infrastructure has a huge multiplier impact on the economy, gives jobs, gives economic activity, all of which supplemented with social welfare programs, only some of which I listed out. The encouragement to young entrepreneurs through mudra loans, to the startups of our young uh, men and women. I can list out maybe a hundred programs right now which have helped change the mindset of India. But a purana gana hai na, samaj ne wale samaj gaye. Na samjhe wo, anadi hai. Oh, I didn't say that. I, that. I said it. I said it. I, I, I go for the kill. I go for the jugular. I'm not a politician. I'm not a diplomat. I'm very used to that. I, I've, I've, I've had to face you for the last 15 right. years now. Now you should also go for the jugular since you're going to be fighting the Lok Sabha elections. You just go for the kill. See, I have this view, Mr. Goel, that there is a romance going on between India and the world right now that is not going to last. And I believe we should be very clear about the future where things are headed. You know, we are, this whole line, we are working with the whole world. Look at how we managed Ukraine. We managed to work with America. We managed to work with Russia. We managed to work with Europe. Europe is becoming insular. But then I believe this romance will not last. And you can counter this because as, this, as we grow from 3 to 5 trillion, 5 to 8 trillion, and you yourself just said we will achieve 15 trillion by 2035, we will not be an object of curiosity. We will be a serious competitor, and I believe a little bit of that wrinkle, that tension, that stress showed up at the... They will say, why is Elon Musk not coming to India? And you will say, we have enough manufacturers for e-vehicles in India. You will say, come to India on our own terms. They will say, we want their terms. You know, so, and if Donald Trump becomes president of the United States, you know how aggressive he is. How will we manage this? Do you see the stress? on trade and economy growing between India and the rest of the world? Absolutely not. In you don't? Fact, uh, I think this is Arnab at his old aggressive best uh, coming out today. But uh, I'd like to join issue with you on that. First of all, it is difficult for somebody who's used to being a superpower, who's used to being on top of things and dictating to the rest of the world, it's very difficult to reconcile on the changing geopolitics that's evident in the world today. So we had a situation where India, at the Uruguay round, when GATS and or TRIPS were being negotiated about 40 years ago, yes. we were a weak country, we, we compromised on many things, and I don't think the then government, irrespective of whichever party was in government, in the 80s, they could never visualize an India of 2024. They could never visualize that India and Indians will start asserting themselves. They could never visualize that India could also aspire to become a developed or a prosperous nation. And therefore, many wrongs, many decisions were made uh, at that time, which we are fighting for today, where we are holding our ground, where we are working with other developed nations and yes. we have a very good coalition of the global south. Yes. And Prime Minister Modi has led from the front. He's got the African Union full membership of the G20. The entire less developed countries and developing world looks up to Mr. Modi's uh, leadership today. And they look up to India holding the ground for what is good for them. Sometimes, even the less developed countries or countries who are not yet up the prosperity chart, particularly the small countries, do not realize that they are going down a path which may seem okay for the present, but can be very dangerous for them. And I think India plays that role of balancing the interests. We want all the countries to grow with the developed countries. At the same time, the developed countries are also gradually reconciled and recognizing that economic opportunity and business is only possible with a developing country like India. 
somebody where there is 1.4 billion people, largely young people, two third of our population in the working age, where the demand for goods and services is going to come from. So I think India offers a perfect opportunity to be friends with, to work with, to engage with as a democracy where the rule of law prevails, and the world is recognizing that. So while there may be some trepidation, some difficulty in accepting it, I think there is no choice but to work closely with India, and you will see in the months and years to come more and more partnerships being forged, more and more relationships being developed between India and the developed world, particularly the developed world which believes in the rule of law, transparency, and ethical business. I thought there was a lot of stress. I thought you were not getting any hugs and handshakes when you went. For your global events, they looked at you with trepidation. Not at all. I, I'm received very warmly. I have some wonderful relations across the world, as does my colleague, Dr. Jay Shankar, who's uh, truly showcased to the Absolutely. world the India story like yeah. never before. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I call him the rock star. You have. You have. That video went viral. And, uh, and truly, he makes each one of us Indian proud. The way he, uh, he presents the India story, yeah. the way he stands up for what India is yeah. doing, yeah. and I can only tell you commerce and foreign ministry yes. are today working, working very literally as twin ministries, very closely aligned with each other. Messaging uh, goes on between him and me literally yeah. by the minute. Wow, wonderful. And I can assure you that under Prime Minister Modi's guidance and leadership, both are working in an aligned banner to get the best for every Indian. So I, I said to everyone coming to this event today, I said you should come for the event because if you spend half the day, one day with me at the event, you will get some sense of what is going to happen in the next half decade. We called it the decade. And I believe that is what we want. You know, we go back into our lives. Somebody called me, oh no, what is in, in it for me? I said, you do your job every day. You do your work every day. Spend half a day, one day on where the country is going. You'll go back more inspired in your jobs. So my last question to you is this. Just two minutes if you can give me a sense. You know, you mentioned trade. You know, we, 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 we are working very hard, for example, on the India, Middle East, EU economic corridor. Give us some sense of what we are going to see in our lifetime in the next five to ten years. You know, what is that in the next decade, in a couple of minutes, from your insider's perspective? What are people going to see? Well, I think in the next uh, decade or so, we'll see a lot of technologies and investments coming from across the world to manufacture in India, which will provide economic activity, jobs to our young boys and girls, which will also provide our young startups yes. with opportunities to innovate on their own ideas. Yes. And this will be necessary for the developed world yes. who are looking for a trusted partner. Yes. And today, for most parts of the developed world in Europe, in the United States, in the Middle East, yes. large parts of Eastern uh, world like Australia, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, yes. they are all finding in India a trusted partner, a country where the rule of law prevails, and this is going to drive huge amounts of investment and technology, which will not only serve the needs of a growing uh, aspirational India, which will also be the sourcing base for the world. Uh, a case in point could be, I think, Apple. Apple started with very small beginnings. Oh yeah, that's They're already at 7-8% of their global production coming out of India. Absolutely. Next two years, they expect to take it up to about 25% of their global production. And the story across the world, wherever we go, people are telling us, uh, our largest workforce today is in India. Our second largest is in India, but in two years it will be the largest. Our R&D all comes from India. Our innovation is happening in India. So by and large across the world, there's a lot of excitement about engaging with India. Yeah. And I can assure all your viewers through you, as we do in Parliament, yes. that uh, be bold, Yes. go for the big ticket, big vision, Yes. Don't ever compromise for second best. Yes. India is going to be on top. We'll provide the best Super. quality. The 
best quality of goods and services, highest level of management talent, best skill sets, and integrity and ethics in workplace, which will be unparalleled anywhere that's, in the world. That's so important. Well, I am, I am, I am, I'm full of positive energy after this. And, you know, I, I, I love the fact that nowadays, when a minister he reaches for an event, till the last minute he's checking a file, till he's got two phones, so he works incredibly hard, but he still gave us time. And we are proud of you. And we wish you all the best in the upcoming elections at a personal level. Thank you, PSG. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Arnab, and always a pleasure to be with you. Sir, as always. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Sir and Arnab. The theme for this year's annual summit of the Republic Media Network is Bharat, the next decade. India is a land of great opportunities. This is the time to grab the opportunities, to catalyze the run-up for the future. The Prime Minister will be delivering the Chief Keynote. We have confirmations from Home Minister Ramit Shah, from Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, and a host of very, very special and distinguished speakers. I really hope you'll join us, and I hope to see you.